welcome to the Red Bee Show. On tonight's episode, I have Celeste Stoney. She is a singer-songwriter, and she has an amazing new album and single that's just coming out, and she also performs for us. So come and get to know her. So hi, Celeste. Hi. How Thank are you? I'm so good. I'm so happy to have you on my show today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's amazing. I really love your new music that's coming out. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm excited about it as well. Yeah, so you have, um, well, you have a new single coming out, right? I do. I have, um, so the first single, the debut single, My Kind of Crazy, that came out uh, towards the end of 2014. Okay. And I was doing really, it's, it's doing really well. I mean, considering that I'm independent, um, completely funded out of my own pockets kind of a thing. So um, it's just been kind of kind of incredible. It's been featured on um, Perez Hilton and CNN. And, wow. Um, yeah, actually was the song that uh, caught the attention of the Grammys and uh, the performance that I just did for them um, in L.A. at the Roxy. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, it's been really, really cool. That's so <laughs> Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Well, how did you, I mean, how did you get into doing this? I mean, as an indie artist, it's, it's really difficult. So it's, you know, I'd love yeah. to hear sort of how you got, how you got started. Um, so I got started in the industry actually a long time ago, about 2002. I was uh, writing demos and singing around town, and um, I actually wound up recording a song that uh, an artist named Ja Rule at the time, who was a, a oh, big, yeah. big rapper, yeah, uh, <laughs> he put that out as a, a single, and it actually went platinum, and that was my first wow. release um, as an artist. And it was kind of just like, I kind of stumbled onto it. It wasn't something that, it, it just happened. Um, Are you allowed to say which song it was? Yeah, or? it was a, a song called Murder Reigns. Okay. Yeah, and it was on uh, the Last Temptation album. Cool. And during that time, I also had another song, uh, another rapper that was really big at the time. Her name was Foxy Brown. Oh, yeah. And I had a single with her and, you know, just kind of wasn't really trying to be an artist, but... You were writing all the songs. Yeah, yeah, and because those things happened, um, you know, I, I pursued that for a little while. Yeah, and um, nothing came of that uh, situation like I thought it would. You know, I thought I was going to be big and famous. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I actually did two TV shows after that. I did um, American Idol season five. I was wow. a, a semifinalist on that. Oh wow! And uh, yeah, and I did um, MTV Making the Band. I was a finalist on that show. Amazing! It was it was cool. It was fun. Um, but then I kind of I lost my passion for being an artist completely. I. I didn't want to do it at all. Um, I just I'd seen a lot of the ugly side of of the industry and and I guess what artists have to go through. And I just uh, I couldn't really handle I think the pressure at the time. Mm. I wasn't in a good place in my life. I think you have to be a really strong mental mentally you know physically spiritually um, and in a good place with your family life to yeah. to really support you because it's a it's a hard industry to be in. Um, yeah. Definitely. So, yeah, I just started, I started writing songs for other people, mm. and uh, that went really well. Um, Apparently I, <laughs> so. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, so I, I stepped out the light of being an artist for, for several years, and uh, in 2013, I signed with a publisher, Pure Music, mm. and I've had placements in um, film, TV, and other artists, and um, it wasn't until 2014, like about May of last year, that I just kind of got a call felt like I was being called back to being an artist. Um, I don't know. It was like everyone that I talked to or was around was kind of pushing me in that direction. Yeah. And uh, well, because you're so talented and you're such a great singer. Thank you. But you, you know, you have to want it, as, yeah. you know, as an artist, because it's a full time job. I mean, a lot of people think artists have it easy and we have an easy job, but it's really like, you know, 12 to 14 hours a day working for yourself, like just to get kind of the things going on that that I've been able to do in this last year so yeah um I had to want it and I I didn't until last year um what do you think made you change your mind um you know I don't I, I, it was just a feeling I mean I started to feel very um unfulfilled in just songwriting mm. and I started to feel like um you know the gift that I had been given to sing as well as write songs that I was wa I was kind of wasting it mm. um you know, and I just, I just started, you know, I'm spiritual, I believe in, you know, I believe in God, and I just was praying a lot about it, like, what should I do, and I just felt like the answer was given to me, like, you need to be an artist, and it was like one morning, uh, I woke up, and I kind of had, like, a urgency of, like, just, like, go, you need, like, I need to do this now, and I was like, okay, and I, uh, that same day, I got an email 
from a woman, uh, a booking agent from the House of Blues. Wow. Yeah. So I was like, okay, this is really weird. You're like, maybe that's a sign. Yeah, just that... a little bit of a God wink there. You know? <laughs> so I told her, I said, I don't, you know, I don't have a show, but, you know, give me 30 days and I'll get back to you with a show. And I did. I found a band. Um, I used songs from my existing catalog that I had written for other artists. Wow. Um, and I put on a show at the House of Blues in the Foundation Room. My very first show was uh, last May, May 31st. Wow. And uh, we sold it out. Um, and then uh, they asked me back for the main room, which is like, I think, 1,200 people. Wow. And we sold it out again. Amazing. Yeah. So from that, from that kind of just like was like, okay. That's not easy to do, by the way. Like, I know a lot of bands that play and have played at the House of Blues, and yeah. they have to really hustle to yeah. get those tickets to get people to come. I mean, it's yeah. not that people don't love the music. It's just, you know, it's a lot. So it's the fact lot. that you got it's sold a lot of, it's sold a lot of work. Out. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of work. So that, but that kind of, you know, opened doors for a lot of things. I was able to get, you know, um, write-ups and blogs and um, I charted on Hype Machine and, you know, just things that kind of opened more doors for me. And um, I mean, I'm, I still haven't been like approached by a label or anything like that. And I, I'm not sure if, if that's even a route I want to do, but I'm just continuing to move forward independently and see where it takes me <laughs> I think it's amazing honestly because when you're independent it's like you have control of everything even though it's definitely tough and yeah. stuff but yeah. you kind of in the end like you're you're the one that's gonna do whatever you want with your music which is amazing yeah you know um when I was like the, the whole jaw rule thing and even writing for other artists you know I felt like there was a sense of like writing in a, in a box like you had to write you know this specific style or you know they wanted to say this thing and usually it was very party driven and um uh, i don't know to, it wasn't <laughs> deep enough for you it wasn't but... deep enough for me yeah. you know as an artist and so um i just feel like you know my message i, I want to say something you know i want to talk about things but i still want it to be fun you know yeah. so i think people will find in my music that the songs <laughs> make you move yeah. and make you want to dance, but if you pay attention, you're like, "Whoa, what? What did yeah. she just say?" Like, well, that the, that makes me think of your music video with your husband. That yes. is so funny. Thank if you, you, especially, I mean, okay, the the video itself, the the sort of antics that are going on, but also the lyrics too. Yeah, yeah, it's and it's really really catchy too. So. Thank you. Thank I think you we so should much. actually show everybody that one. Yeah, what do you think? Let's, let's listen. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, and what's the name of this song? My kind of crazy. All right, so here's the music video for My Kind of Crazy.
Okay, so that's fantastic. Yes. I love that video. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Um, my, my husband's an actor, so I told him I'll never have a love interest in my <laughs> videos except for you. Um, so he didn't know that the first video we would do together, I would make him a total nerd and put, you know, glasses and high water pants. And, <laughs> and he's like spitting out his uh, like food on himself. He and was so fun. It, it was so funny. It was a lot of fun. He really like played up the role and um, we were just cracking up all day. It was, <laughs> It was fun. It I was can imagine. Fun. Yeah. That's great. He's actually in my second video. So the second single that I'm releasing is a song called Cool. Okay. And um, it's a song about the over-sexualization in media and mm -hmm. how it affected me as a young girl and into my adulthood and kind of where I stand on the on the issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, But it's fun. You wouldn't think that I'm talking about that kind of stuff when you're listening to the music. Um, but the music video we shot, um, we did it in the 1920s. So oh, I love that. It's really cool. It's a period piece. So he, he actually comes to, he's in the future, mm. and he has this magic um, pocket watch. And at midnight, he goes back in time. The music changes, the set changes, his clothes, everything. And he goes back to this old like speakeasy. And he comes back to see me night after night, and um, I'm performing the song there. I have a full band, upright piano. We have uh, swing dancers that are throwing themselves, you know, throwing each other up in the air. And, Amazing! Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and then in the end, he winds up taking me back to his time. So it, it's it's a lot of fun. That'll be coming out uh, end of July. So okay. Looking for that. So yeah, we'll have to check it out. And uh, do they go and check out your channel, your YouTube channel? Is that where it's released? Yes. So or? I'm uh, on social media mm -hmm. um, at Celeste Stoney on everything: Instagram, um, Facebook, Twitter, and then uh, also on SoundCloud. Okay. Forward slash Celeste Stoney, and YouTube is also forward slash Celeste Stoney, and my website CelesteStoney.com. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> so we'll just put a link right here for you guys yeah. to go and check it out. Yay. <laughs> Well, so I wanted to ask, you know, when did you start singing? Because you have an amazing voice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I get asked that a lot and I'll, or I'll be asked like, you know, who'd you listen to, listen to growing up or what were your influences? And, you know, to be honest, I, I just was singing from early. I mean, three, four, whatever, you know, my... Yeah, I'd sing with my mom, I'd sing with my dad, you know, my dad was... They sing too? Well, not professionally, but... Around the house. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know. That's inspiring. No, yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, so we would sing a lot. And I honestly didn't think that I could sing. I mean, I I didn't really have confidence in myself. I mean, I have videotape of me in college shaking, like, you know, performing in front of people and just such a fear mm. that it, it almost crippled my, my ability to sing. Mm -hmm. And um, for years, I suffered from that. Like, How did you get past that? You know, it just, it just went away. Honestly, and it was only this last year. It literally was like, my, my very first performance was a private showcase at SIR Studios, and I purposely invited every industry person I knew, and they were literally five feet in front of me. And when I walked on stage, I had no fear. I mean, just, it was gone. It was the craziest thing, because every time I had performed prior to that, I was terrified. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I kind of rationalize it to myself that maybe I wasn't supposed to be an artist at that time mm. you know I don't know it's like <laughs> now it just it just works now now you're you yeah it's fine with you or it, I don't know it works it is not even I mean state the house of blues stage like nothing it's no there's no no fear anymore and when did you start actually writing songs um like 2002 yeah cool. two, that was probably the first song I ever wrote was in 2002 yeah. So you're just, you know, you're at home, you're writing songs, and then how did you get to to these artists? Like, how did that happen? So the the way songwriting works is you you have to really kind of network. It's all, It really is a lot about who you know. So I spent a lot of time going to, like, ASCAP expos, um, getting in different studios around town, even if I couldn't write, just, like, being in the studio, meeting people, um, working with producers that maybe hadn't gotten a whole lot of placements to get a catalog that was um, you know enough to show a bigger producer that hey I got the chops mm. to get in with a bigger producer so it's really um, developing relationships with um, other songwriters and other producers um, A&R's mm. um, and even publishers just kind of networking so people know who you are so when you have the songs you can actually pitch them to someone and get them heard um, but it's it's a hard I mean, that's a really, really competitive, yeah. tough industry to be in, too. Yeah. So. 
I mean, I, I still haven't gotten like a huge placement, like a, a single. And, and that's the thing with songwriting, um, unless you get that like single that's playing on the radio, you're really not making a lot of money as a songwriter. Mm-hmm. Unless you're, you know, you have the song that's playing all over the radio because songwriters are paid through um, royalties. Yeah, well, mm. th- from ASCAP, BMI, the Performing Rights Societies, mm. we're paid royalties when something airs on TV, on the radio, um, even like some larger concerts. Um, we're not actually paid much mm. on album sales. We get pennies, mm. you know, on album sales. So unless you have that hit, it's it's really tough to be a songwriter. You you can make money in film though, TV and film. Fantastic. Make, make a lot. Make a lot of money. That's great. Yeah, That's yeah. Great I'm, advice. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I, I finally started getting some stuff with my music into TV and film. So wow. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. Yay. Well, I think that you know you're you're singing and then plus your amazing songwriting mixed together, it's just going to be you know really successful and. Thank um, you. I, I just can't wait to show everybody. So why don't we cut yeah. to your performance of your new, yes. your new song? This one is camouflage. This isn't cool, though. So um, It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit more emotional. It is. It's not really a party song, but it's amazing. So, yeah. so here we go. Why don't you guys check it out? Hi, my name is Celeste Stoney. I'm here today with Nate Owens, and I'm going to be performing a song called Camouflage. It's the third single off of my EP titled Unashamed, which will be released in the fall. And this song is a song about being yourself and, you know, just not being afraid to stand in your own skin. Um, you should never be afraid to be who you are, so enjoy.
So that was just beautiful. Thank you, thank you. That's uh, that's the only ballad that I have on my album. Um, definitely a more emotional, softer side to yeah. me. Um, you know, I a lot of artists try to like, you know, stick in a, a particular type of a genre, and I don't really believe in that. I mean, I think that my music in a whole is pop, and it's also very soul. And um, you know, I I. I love to do songs like that that really touch people. I've had people come up to me crying. Um, that song was, I originally wrote it for um, a friend of mine. He was, he was living in the closet for a long time and no one, no one knew. And uh, he finally approached us and, you know, he told us that he was going to, you know, he was coming out and, and, and it was just a moment where I looked back on all the times that, you know, even though as a society we have grown to accept that, there are many times when you're in social settings and something is said that's inappropriate, um, you know, and you hear things that if you, you know, were gay would offend you. And I, I remember many times that I'd seen him laugh at things or kind of look the other way or even pretend to like girls or whatever because of him being uncomfortable, you know, not wanting to, um, you know, fully come out. And it was just, I don't know, it was a moment that I just was like, you know what, you shouldn't hide behind anything. Why, why be afraid to be who you are because of what other people think of you, you know? And so it, it inspired that song. And um, wow. yeah, I hope it touches all, people and just encourages them to, just in anything, just to not hide behind. You should just be who you are, you know? That's so good. I, I agree with you very much because that's a very important message. Yeah. And especially for, you know, people who want to be artistic and stuff, it's very important to um, just be who you are and follow what you want to do because I think that's why people fail. It's because they, st they stop doing that or they yeah. listen to other people, yeah. you know. So yeah. you're doing an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. So this is the new debut single that is out that you guys just got to hear. So... Um, go yes. ahead and you know go to her website and it's on iTunes, on Spotify, iTunes. Um, Pandora. Yeah, check it out. So we've got that, and then what else goodies do we have here? I brought you a wristband. Oh, I get a wristband. Celestoni.com. Okay, good. I got Celestoni.com and a T-shirt and a T-shirt. Okay, good. Yeah, this is very cool. It has the lyrics from the song. Um, I kind of crazy on there. It says sometimes we just fight so we can. And you can <laughs> insert there. Insert. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We're on TV, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Thank you yeah, so much. I no love problem. it. No problem. Thank you. Yeah. So what are you going to be doing next? So I'm gearing up now for uh, the release of Cool in July and then Camouflage in the fall, along with my debut EP, Unashamed, which as of right now has seven songs. Wow. Um, yeah. So I'm really excited about that. And... Um, I don't know, hopefully like a tour and, you know, I'd like to have some sort of a partnership with a distributor or a label or somebody to kind of help me get out to the mass, uh, the Definitely. masses. And um, I'm sure that's going to happen. I mean, you just played at the so. gra with the Grammys thing. Yeah. You've got, yeah. And you're, you're just, I just think you're going to be really well known. And I just think, you know, you just keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Definitely. I appreciate you having me. Yeah. And I love the fact that you're kind of a vintage too, like your retro style and everything. I, you know, I love, I love vintage retro. I don't know. And not, not necessarily any specific error, but I just, I yeah. just love I don't know. I, I'm kind of a little lightweight, conservative, sexy, I guess you call it. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I just love that time. I love the hairstyles. Me so too. Much fun. It's so much fun. It is. I love it. <laughs> it goes great with your music too. And, um, and uh, I see you have done some special, some special hair. Yes. Here. Yes. yes. <laughs> I, I don't have it today, but I usually get wild crazy designs this is like the most fun hairstyle that i've ever had i was <laughs> terrified to do this to my hair i started with like just this much of my hair yeah and i i went and they just cut it with a scissor and yeah. i came home and i had a ponytail on and i saw my husband and i was like babe i was like what do you think of my hair and he was looking at me and he was like hmm i was like i i, I don't know I, I he didn't see it he couldn't even he tell. He couldn't tell. He couldn't tell. Oh my god. So I was like, okay, this is not 
this is not enough. I gotta go. <laughs> so I went back and I had him shave it, and then she shaved it to here, and I was like, no, 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 just, just go, just go Let's for do it. Do it. Shave it all off. <laughs> so I had one side for a long time, um, and then I just, I just, I don't know. I just wanted a, I wanted both sides, and it's really fun because this part's really long, so I can do like a big mohawk, or I can even wear it all the way down, which I do quite often and freak people out because like, <laughs> wait, you have hair. Yeah. You can't see this at all. It covers I, it up. It covers it up. Amazing. So so I can look, you know, it's just a fun, it's a fun hairstyle. I love it. Thank you. Yes, Thanks I so totally much. love it. And I think it's very memorable. So yeah, Thank you. Thank it's you really so cool. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I appreciate it. Very much. It's really cool. Thank you for watching singer songwriter Celeste Stoney on The Red Booth. <laughs> yeah.